Welcome to Land the House. I'm Seth. I've been working with this four inch micro hydro turbine from Langston's Alternative Power and it's starting to see some pretty good results. We've gotten up to about 25 watts so far. But in the last test, I realized that it was sucking a lot of air between the joints because I haven't glued anything up yet. So let's take a look at it real quick and I'll show you. It's got uh, several different places where air gets in. Those two around that 45. The big one is right here where uh, the turbine connects to the four inch pipe. It's not seated very well and it's pulling a lot of air. And there are at least five more places where air is getting in. So that being the case, we're going to use some duct tape to uh, close around these joints and hopefully prevent that air from going through. And we'll take a power reading and see what the watts are up to. Now, if you have a pretty keen eye, you may notice something in the background. Um, let me show you real quick. Pretty cool, huh? It's a new charge controller. So uh, this is not really rated for hydro, but uh, it's gonna have a different kind of meter on it, and we should get a good power reading uh, from that. And also, it's an MPPT, um, not made for hydro, but it should give us better results than that uh, previous cheap Chinese-made um, PWM. Um, also, my neighbor said he's got something coming up soon, and I have to get this turbine out of the water. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what he's talking about, but um, we will get that out of there so that whatever project he has planned, he can get in there and do that. But for the time being, let's go ahead and test this. And to be honest, we're supposed to get a massive storm right now, so I uh, will have to come back and film this, but let me see if I can show you how dark these clouds are. It's really crazy. So yes, my neighbor who is up here for the summertime in an RV has brought down a water wheel. I know that uh, most of my audience for this turbine has been suggesting a water wheel. So we will see how well this thing works. Um, actually, let's take a look at it while we're here before this rain sets in. I gave him a treadmill motor um, probably a year ago and he's gonna try that out first. He's covered it up with this uh, plastic to hopefully keep it from getting wet. I don't know, it may get overheated. Oh yeah, he's got some air holes under there. But yes, he has a bicycle attached here with uh, the chain coming off of the, the main wheel. And then it's got uh, the pulley here, which will actually turn that turbine. So hopefully he gets some good results out of that. I'm gonna say the wheel is somewhere around five foot. He's got some counterweight here to hopefully get it balanced. Uh, everything is tied off at the moment. It's pretty cool. I like it a lot. I'm not sure if he used plans from some website or not, but uh, it looks like a pretty solid build. So his plan with this is to use my other neighbor's excavator, set it down over here where my stuff is, and uh, put a little a trough up here that will bring water over and fall into it. And uh, anyway, should be really fun. So all of that being said, this may be the last test we do here. And then I will move all of my stuff over to the other pond, which is way around this one on the other side. Uh, similar drop, more water to work with. So uh, we should be good just a little bit further away than uh, right here. I thought I would risk the storm and come over here and show you what the other waterfall looks like. We'll be able to go straight down into the water so it won't have that uh, angle. I'm thinking that the drop is maybe a little less. So we're probably dealing with somewhere around, oh, I don't know, six feet, maybe seven. I've not been down there, so I don't know for sure. Um, but it should be good for their power. And there's a lot more water going off of this one than the other one. I also think that this big slab is not quite as deep. And so maybe it won't have as much to siphon. And you'll notice it's already about an inch or two up this rock. Maybe easier to see over there. So what I'm gonna be doing is putting a board from this side to that side with some sandbags bring the water of this whole pond up so that it pours directly into the turbine. And I'm hoping we've got enough water here 
to run this pretty good without having to um, drain the pond very quick. And uh, so without that real siphon effect going on, we should see some more power if the water is just pouring directly into a pipe without that 45. All right, I'm going back to the house. The big storm passed. It's actually been about two weeks since I started this video. My neighbor has already put his water wheel down here into the hole. My other neighbor used his excavator and they just set it down there. So I've got to get all of my stuff out of here. Um, so if you didn't know, if you're new to the channel, I do all of my YouTube filming either on Tuesdays or Thursdays, depending on when my sister can watch my kids. And here in the mountains of North Carolina, it rains either Tuesday or Thursday <laughs> every week. Uh, so last week I didn't get to film because of rain, um, but this week it's supposed to rain. So I've got you on the GoPro. The task for now is to go ahead and pull this out and get it swapped over to the other side of the pond. So if you didn't know, uh, we've been filming here on these cascading ponds, which empty out into the big empty lake. And so around the corner over there, there is another set of these, which actually I remember I just showed you in the other clip. So that's all mute. Anyway, let's go ahead and take all this out and take it over to the other side so we can do testing while my neighbor can get his water wheel set up over here. My neighbor is fine with me showing his water wheel in a video uh, in the future, but he's got it placed down here. I'm going to see how uh, balanced this thing was. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Seems like you did a really good job on balancing. Anyway, that will be for another video. Let's see what I'll have to do over here to get this out. Um, I may just see if I can pull the whole downpipe out of there and then lift the uh, turbine itself up. So maybe I can keep all of that together. We'll have to take our pipe as well. <laughs> oh, nice. That'll make the other part of this a lot lighter. The previous four inch hydro video had an unbelievable amount of responses to uh, how to get the air from, or to prevent the air from going into the system. Um, caulking and putty and tape, uh, all very good suggestions. I think I'm gonna try the tape first, and then we may try the um, caulking and putty later. But, so this joint right here, I think is our main issue. It was pulling a lot of air in. Um, so. I'll tape everything when we get it out here and we can hopefully see a lot of power produced whenever there's no air slowing this thing down. Brought the wrong shoes for this. I stopped to talk with my neighbor for a while and he gave me a 12 volt battery. So now we have two so we can do a 24 volt system. Also, I just took the piece of pipe here and lowered it down to the water. To measure and it's right at seven foot from the edge of the rock here down to the water so seven feet to what we're working with which is pretty cool now let me show you this real quick i just disconnected the pipe and you can see it was resting right here and so we basically only had about a half inch of a connection and the rest of that was not connected and it was just letting in a tremendous amount of air so can see things spinning down in there. All right, so let me head back to the house and get some tape and probably the electronics since it's not raining yet, and maybe we can get a good test underway. I believe that I have everything we need now to get this back in the water. So I took a rock and I kind of uh, hammered this a little bit. And it moved from past here to there. So it has definitely moved about an inch, an inch and a half in. So now I'm gonna do two things. I've got some of this regular caulking and some of this Gorilla Tape. So I'm gonna put some caulk around here and then uh, Gorilla Tape around there a couple times to hopefully make a good seal. And then we will uh, do that to the rest of the joints and hopefully get this back in the water. So what I'm thinking is uh, whenever uh, we get this piece right here in, I might put that right up at the top so that our vacuum point is up high and don't have to use this crazy uh, 
long tube contraption. And the reason for this caulking is just to uh, keep from having to glue all these joints up. Which I may end up doing anyway if we get a good test going. I think I have everything connected and taped up here with some caulking and then over there on that one side. So you can see I've put my vacuum tube right here and I will probably cut uh, a little piece of this and just angle back up so I'm not leaning over too far. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and walk this over here. I don't know how long to cut my downpipe yet until we get this set up over here. So let's do that real quick. Whoops, made a mistake here. This can't come back in this direction because it'll hit the rock here. So I gotta go off in that direction, I believe. So it'll go kind of up over here and I can maybe bring it up to about this level here. I've got the vacuum tube all the way up here. So that's pretty good. I didn't tape any of that yet. So there may be some air leaks, but most of the stuff was getting in right there. So now I need to hold this four inch pipe over the cliff here and see how far I need to cut it down so it can get in the water just barely and then uh, attach up here. I'll pull all this back out to uh, get that attached because I don't have any ladder or anything to get down in there and it would be uh, pretty nasty to uh, wait around in that. And finally, it is set back up into the water. So I've got the down pipe down about uh, two or three inches, which should be fine. And it is just a straight shot. So I think we'll see the best power so far. Uh, I need to go back and put some caulking and tape around a few more joints, but the uh, rain clouds are ro uh, rolling in fast. So let's go ahead and get this thing started just to see how well it works. And we will uh, come back later, uh, probably in the next video, and start doing our power tests again. Let's see, that one's the end. Nope, I get it backwards every time. Very good. I'm already seeing a lot less air than last time. That's really good. Well, everything seems to be working well. Cool. And I don't hear that sloshing like before. Okay, that's all for this video. I just wanted to get this thing set back up in the water so we can continue our tests. We now have 24 volts to work with and we have a little bit more water. It's still gonna drain this thing. I can tell already it's um, less and less water going over, but I think we have at least twice the amount of water coming into this pond as there was in the other test. And also this thing is almost twice as big. So we have more water to work with uh, in that aspect as well. Another thing that's coming up, I'm gonna use a board and sandbags to, uh oh, a vortex. We need a vortex destroyer. <laughs> so a uh, simple tennis ball can be used as a vortex destroyer. I think that proves that there is more water going into the system than there was in the other setup because it didn't have quite that much strength to pull that over. How awesome is that? 
Anyway, I'm super excited about these tests. I hope you are as well. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. All right, the boards and sandbags. So right now, the intake is here, obviously, and it has a 45, and then the pipe goes down into the water. The plan is to place a board across this system. So from like right here, all the way across to over here, and then I'll put sandbags on it to keep the water from going under. And we're gonna see if we can lift the water up high enough that it will just go directly into the pipe and see if there's an increase in the output. So that will be another test we run over here as well. All right, that's it. Bye this time. I hope that introducing this air shuts the system off. Yep, sure does. I closed the siphoning point, came over here and started cleaning up, and I heard something. It just started back up on its own. There must have been just enough water trickling over that it uh, pulled the siphon again and started up. So I'm gonna have to leave this open to prevent that from happening.